today's video, I want to talk about usage fees and specifically when and how to charge them. So I've had a few people saying, well, there's two main questions I get. One is this client here, they're using it for this, but they're not paying usage, but I'm worried if I add usage, it'll be too expensive. And the other is just who do I charge usage to? So let's break these down. Let's look at the first example. I'm working with a client. I'm charging them. Let's just make up some numbers here. A thousand pounds a day. They're using it on a billboard. I should be charging usage for this. How much and how do I do it? Two things here. One is if you're already working with them and you add usage, they'll drop you. And they'll either hire a photographer who are, or they'll either hire a photographer who already charges usage and everything because they feel that they're getting what they're due, they look, they're paying more and they're getting a better photographer. Even if you're both as good, it's a weird concept thing. It's very hard to increase your price with a client. Not impossible, but very hard. Definitely impossible to add usage onto a current client because the usage is the majority of our income. And the other problem is they'll just go, no. So in this particular setting, you need to ask yourself two questions. One is, do I want to do this work? And two is, do I want to do it for this amount of money? If you're so busy with other work that it's just a pain, drop the client politely, but drop them. It's something that I had to do when I was progressing through the ranks. You get to the point where you go, this is great, I'm getting a thousand pounds a day from you, but these people here pay me 10 to 20 times more per day. I don't need this thousand pounds. I'm gonna have to let you guys go and work with somebody else. Now, the other option is when you come in with a fresh client and they want to have a billboard campaign shot. I'm using a billboard campaign because it's the easiest thing to go for. And they're going, right, how much does it cost? And, and do we own the images? What, what, what can we use them for? How do we make sure we're allowed to use them? Because we've had problems in the past. Problems in the past is normally a red flag situation, but that's another video altogether. Well, I, I am going to do a video where I go through all the things that clients say that when I hear them, I just go, not working with you. Anyway, I digress. So the first thing you need to look at is how big is this client? Where I live, we have local restaurants who do billboards and they're not gonna pay usage. They're barely gonna pay my day rate. And then we also have brands who are well-known brands. We have your, your Toyota, your Jaguar, your Mars, your Pepsi, your Nestle. I'm hoping these are universal brands. I'm trying to think Nike, Adidas or Adidas. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, but these are big brands. These people, they will pay the license fee. Kim's Boutique, there is no Kim's Boutique in Leicester. They're not gonna pay license fee. Your local independent, your small independent franchise or chain where it's like we've got three restaurants, they're not going to pay your license fee. And you need to realize that license fee is for the big productions. It's for the big shoots, the big brands. They might say, can I own the images or can I buy the images? Sometimes in some countries, they want to physically own the image as a financial asset for selling the company on with. And that, that's a, another video altogether as well. But if the brand and this is my particular thing. If I, if I can find it in a supermarket, they're paying usage. If I can't, they're not. And I might work with them, I might not. It depends on, you know, my, my general saying is, is it a cash cow? If they're not paying, it's not a cash cow. Is it good for my portfolio? Is it? Is it interesting? Is it going to be good? Have they got good ideas? Are we going to do a good shoot? And if not, no, we won't be doing it. So that's how I kind of manage those situations. So when and how. Now the how for me, I use the AOP calculator. Now, granted, I don't do this myself. I have an agent who does it for me, but they calculate the usage on that. We put it through to them. There was then a negotiation, which I have nothing to do with. I don't know what goes on these things, but they talk about it and they come out with a number. The number is normally so random. I have no idea how they've come to it. For example, say the usage for one particular thing is 10,000. They'll come out with 9,673 and 39 pence. There must be a reason for it. I don't know the reason, but that's that. Now, sometimes clients will go, we've got a very small budget for this particular production. And if it's a new client and I want to get higher up in there, I might say no to it, which might seem counterintuitive. But if I say yes, I'll always be the, the guy they go to for the lower budget stuff. But if I say no, it's not really something I can facilitate, then when they get a bigger job, they're more likely to phone me. So that's my kind of thinking. Now, this is a lot of rambling so far, as usual. I've had a litre of coffee today. So let me sort of break it down into simpler terms. If you're already shooting for a client and you want to start adding usage to that client, not going to happen. You need to decide whether you're going to carry on working at your current rate or find new clients or wait until you find new clients and drop them. If you get a quote from a client and they're talking about usage, you need to decide, are they a big brand? And if so, yes, we add usage. And if not, let's talk to them about what we can and can't do. And it is always a negotiation. There are no hard, fast rules and no hard, fast prices. Everything is up for negotiation. That's why agents exist, because people like me, not so good at negotiating. It comes down to this. If you're not happy with what they're asking for. You don't have to do it unless you're really desperate for money, which is absolutely fine. We all get there at some point, in which case you go, don't we really want to do that, but man, I want to eat some food. So we're going to do the shoot. 
happens to all of us. We all have to do that. Sometimes you have to do something you don't agree with, you don't want to do, but money talks. Now I'm going to pop a link to the AOP calculator because it's a great way to work out usage. But just remember that it is merely a guideline, nothing more than that. And I think the big thing which all of these videos miss out on is yes, you can charge usage and yes, this is how you should charge usage, but your work has to be good enough. Nobody's going to pay me big usage at Nike for portraits because my portrait work is, is, is frankly rubbish. You know, no one's going to pay me big usage for cookbook style works. My cookbook style work is, you know, they're both fine. I can do jobs with it, but they're not going to pay me 50 grand in usage because I'm not at that level. So although it's all good going, yes, we can add usage and yes, usage should be there. You need to be good enough. The lower down clients who can't afford it, they can't afford those good photographers because they won't work without it. So it's a bit more than just, yes, when they're at this level, we should charge usage. You also need to be at that level to be able to charge usage, at which point you don't care about the smaller jobs anyway. So it's a bit more complex than just that. It's not a case of free money where you just go, oh, I'm gonna add usage onto this job. No, no, no. You need to be good enough to be getting the jobs where they expect to pay usage. And part of paying for the usage is them saving money. Because if we charge them to own the photos every time, they'd be paying hundreds of thousands of pounds a day when really they're just going to pop it on a packaging box and they need to pay 5,000. So for them, it's saving money. And I, I'm going to go into more detail in this as well, because this is not the full story of usage. This is not its entirety, but I'm trying to break it down to bite-sized segments so it's more digestible and hopefully helps people in their little snippets of what do I do in this instance rather than watching a five hour video about usage? So yes, yeah, some of the things I've said are not actually correct, but they sort of make the argument work. They're white lies. So hope this is of use to you. I hope it answers your question. If it doesn't, drop it in the comments below and I'll try my best to add another video next time I'm filming and we'll hopefully get to the bottom of the, the usage debacle.